Hey guys, it's Celine. It's Wednesday. So yeah, I've been to the market. I'm lighting us a little candle. Just to, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, liven things up slightly. It actually does look a bit more. Um, just setting this off to the side of my phone here. Just a bit more color. Just a bit more, you know? Okay. Um... I want to come out because there have been uh, some developments. It's all going to be energy work related. So if that's not what you want to hear me talk about, then I'm sorry, but this is today. Okay, this is just what I got to do here. Um, it's been um, interesting. I have reported, I haven't done that many vlogs recently. I have reported... Um, Monday last, so just two days ago, about um, how I was doing in terms of Tumo and just general, you know, things. And before that, there's been a week like I never came out at all. And for some reason, it's been quite tough. Huh? And I said so. Okay, so it looks like I got it figured out. Which is a good thing, <laughs> because I was getting, I don't really do well when there's some kind of a apparent problem situation going on, you know. So my problem situation being that I have a lot of energy work going on, I have a two more practice and so on and so forth. And you have to navigate it, you have to, when it gets really complex... Apparently, you just have to invent your own manual and figure it out, you know. So that's what I've been doing. I've been doing quite a lot of that on this channel as well. And there's loads and loads of videos that, and also playlists, you know, of where I sort of group my stuff in, into some kind of different sets of categories, you know, where they at least belong with each other. Uh, a lot of it is about two more and there's, it's just, you have to make it up. You have to figure out what it is that's going to work because you do get occasionally, not all the time, but you occasionally get into situations where that's necessary, where you just don't, you just, something's off, right? So for example, this necklace that I got here that I actually sort of uh, have been pimping along with uh, uh, whatever, you know, the, the thing is, I have a couple of really uh, special rings on here that I've owned uh, almost all my life and that I'm super fond of. What I had up to uh, yesterday, actually, is the part that is like so. So one chain with a couple of pretties sitting on there. And I didn't feel comfortable at all going, leaving the house with, what's that got to do with energy work? Patience. It, it's coming, I promise. Okay. Where the, the rings would just attach to just one eyelet or just, you know, just in there. Because the thought of losing one or more of those rings doesn't bear thinking. Okay. So I wanted a separate, um, preferably quite solid chain. To go to, through the whole thing. So I go to thrift stores all over the country now. And pick up stuff. And that's just, you know, especially in terms of jewellery. It's like a completely new avenue of exercise, of, uh, of adventure for me. And I actually found a chain that is compa composed of three different, uh, like so. Three different uh, chains. And so those go, all of them go through all of the rings. So I don't suppose anything bad can happen to them now. And they're closed at the back and the, the, the hole is um, attached to the other chain. So there's two chains, one that actually has most of the kit and all the little charms and little hearts and shells and windmill and every, all the, you know, interesting memorabilia. I love this thing. However, I had just sort of put it together in its form 
without the second triple set of three, you know, a uh, chain in there two weeks ago when I had a rather bad vibration experience. Okay. So the whole of the, of the charms adventure was affected by that. It was so silly and it was just impossible to deal with. <laughs> it's just one, um, like a clear example where I keep running into this. I was so fond of this. I am so fond of all the little things that are on here. There's all sorts of things that have to do with different phases in my life, you know, like you do with charms. And it's supposed to be all about that. And it's supposed to be sentimental and nostalgic and have all the, you know, to be like a summary of your life. And each time I'd been sick, okay, I had a couple of in lower belly issues going on. I won't go into any more details on that. You can imagine what that was like. I was very sick and queasy for a couple of days, really. Due to uh, an energy meditation that I had done on the Monday before, Wednesday, I blah, 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 you know, got the period. I got all sorts of extra... <laughs> It was a big cleanse. Let's just call it that, okay? And leave it at that. By more or less the Sunday or so afterwards, I was okay again. I was on my feet. I was doing everything and I was feeling a bit, you know, not like you, 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 you have to get it all back on track, you know, with your innards. So that being said, that actually worked fine. But then each time I saw my necklace lying here on the table or wherever I put it, it was like I was feeling sick again. Each time I couldn't look at the necklace as it was at the time with the one single chain. Okay, if you can still follow <laughs> my adventure. It's, it was like it, it had been infected in terms of vibration. So I was upset by that and it took me a while to figure out that this was actually upsetting to me because I can be really dumb in those things sometimes where it takes me forever to figure out that I really I would put so much work into this and I'd looked up at you know found all these eyelets that I still had in bags in my bead box and in my jewelry departments that I are all over the house you know and I just I'd just gotten around to putting it all together and boom and there we went. And it was like the whole thing just had a such a horrible vibe over it. And it made me sick to my stomach each time I saw it. So I felt like, okay, this is absolutely an indication that there's something off here. Something's going on that I just can't, I don't seem to process. I don't seem to know what's going on. Other than that, I didn't have that many symptoms or obvious points of reference or things where I said like, okay, so I can see that something's not right here. What I done in terms of energy work, let me just try to really summarize that in one sentence. <laughs> Always difficult, right? Um, I have two types of energy work, really. The TUMO practice that has to do with the energy coming out of the earth on the one hand, and a white light procedure with that I have used for years, always to good effect, to get rid of negative energies that I feel have, you know, there's always some sort of an indication. Often in the past, it used to be that I got headaches and that would mean that there was some kind of a in the earth underneath me there was some kind of an energy or in my aura often even in my field my aura field there'd be some kind of an energy that was just interfering um, with my own and it didn't really serve a purpose anymore didn't really connect to me except in the in the way that it would give me a headache for example that's the main the most common type of event it doesn't always mean that when i have a headache that is the case, although I have less and less headaches nowadays with, with the tumor, okay? So that's been, uh, it's all been really helpful. But the white light is a kind of a meditation where you um, sort of ask the white light to come 
into your system or wherever in your system it's needed, into your aura field, into your awareness, into, into the earth beneath you even. It's, it's extremely powerful, apparently, okay? But it's always been like, afterwards I felt relieved. I could often see the energies going away, being uh, sort of um, extracted from the earth, from the situation. And sometimes it had to do with ancestor energies, things like that, you know. That's just uh, a way I have of dealing with those. That tended to always be beneficial. It tended, it, it has always been only ever, you know, pleasant, beneficial, good result. Afterwards, you felt lots better. You could always tell. And this time, so I'm not going to be able to do this in one sentence, obviously. This time, there was like a shock effect from the healing vibration into this whole, it seemed to be uh, closely connected to some kind of a menopause phenomenon at the moment, which I am experiencing, so I'm not surprised about that. And I got some of the less pleasant energy to actually leave my system, and then afterwards I kind of went into shock and had, it was, I was awfully cold, I was shaking and shivering really badly, and I couldn't get back in control. I couldn't get any two more energy. And it was just a complete shutdown. So that was two and a half weeks ago. Okay. On Monday. Afterwards, I had my problems with my belly. And then that sorted itself out. And I was okay again. And I could do, could do normal tumor again. And everything was seemed to be more or less fine. Except for the signals I kept getting from my necklace. Okay. And in other parts where I went like, something's not right. Something's simply just, it doesn't really compute. Things don't add up. So Monday last, in the evening, I went into that same part of my under earth system again. So there's, how I look at it now is that we have four chakras I keep calling them chakras because it's the easiest way to to explain it. But they're in my mind, they're not really chakras in the same way that we have those in on our bodies. They're like transformation, energy transformation centers. Four of those underneath our feet in the earth. Okay. I won't go into all sorts of details, but the third down is the one that was affected in such a harsh way. Monday last, so two weeks after my bad episode, okay, I went in with a small helping of white light to see what would happen, to see to see whether we could get any notion of what the problem was and whether anything could be done about it. And just in general to sort of feel out the situation, just to get a notion of what what possibly could be going on in there, okay? And there was the same kind of reaction from that third down chakra, if you call it that. Um, it's just the easiest way to, to refer to it, really. And it doesn't really matter. It's, you know what I mean if I say a chakra, okay? So the third down, and it was like it got super upset, and it was so noticeable and so scary. You, get, you could get like uh, the same cold effect coming into your body. It was like that chakra completely shut down. And then the, um, so the lower dantian, which is what I use in my tumo, okay? Dantians are separate from chakras. They're also transformation centers and they sit in the bodies, in the body at three different levels. And the lowest one sits between your hip bones, more or less, and that one, would completely shut down and I would get cold again and I could feel it coming. I could feel that it was, there we go again. You know, it's the same, the same circus with the temperature in my body just plummeting. And I'm in my bed under the blankets and it's like 35 degrees all around me. You know, I'm so nice and cozy and, um, and comfortable. So, and I was relaxed and had no other causes of anything 
being off kilter or in any way. So I could tell this is what's happening. This is how I look at these things. It's like a, like a laboratory kind of an experiment, except I am the labor laboratory myself. <laughs> so this third down chakra couldn't stand the presence of the white light. It really couldn't. So I backtracked. I went, thank you, bye now, in terms of white light. I just put it, parked it all the way out, in, out of my system. And I got to, uh, this was, of course, because I had like a 10% uh, sensation of the type of sensations that I had two weeks ago. So I didn't go like all the way over there and have the full on, because by that time you're so shut down, you can't really fix it anymore. I saw it coming and I went like, okay, this isn't happening again. We're not doing the same thing again. There's no reason. Park the white light and you have to be quite firm and decisive in those things because that's how this works, you know. No way. This is uh, thank you, bye, this is enough. And restart a tumult, okay? So we can get warm again, we can feel relaxed again, and we... We know what we're doing. Okay. So far, so good. And then bringing Tumo to that third down chakra. And this is what I kept on doing in the night a few times, I think, and in the morning. So I slept in between because I just fell asleep as soon as I got my Tumo back online. I, uh, I went like, okay, obviously this is something that needs, um, needs, you know, more attention. It needs to f be figured out, but not with white light. Apparently that's a problem. I'm going to have me a sip of water here. So when I came back to it in the morning with the Tumo, after a little while, what came out of this chakra was a huge sense of sadness. It was like it came running towards me. It was a really weird sensation that looks or feels most of all like a soul retrieval experience. But it's not a soul retrieval experience where that would be more about... What am I trying to say here? Some kind of personal history of yours is what we tend to think when it's about soul retrieval, right? We tend to think it has to do something with a past life, preferably in one way or another. There is, or it has, often it has to do with trauma. It has to do with emotion. There is all those things. But this chakra, it has to do with the nature of this, of this chakra, okay? I call this one the incarnation chakra. So what I see is with those four going down is that I, I have, first of all, you have the earth star chakra, which sits right underneath your feet. I've said this a number of times already. It turns out it's quite important in the context of the Tumo practice. It's become more and more important, become more and more relevant to me over the past months, two, three months or so. And I have found, like I've also, also said a couple of times already, uh, other people on the internet talking about these chakras. Not so much on YouTube, though, I think. But though it's probably out there. Haven't looked. Earth star chakra. People don't really agree with me on the exact placement or the name of the different chakras. But that's okay. As long as they're, they're agreeing on that there's a couple of components that have to do with these, um, these layers in the, in the earth. And one component is the earth star, where it's like every, all the energy is brought together before it emerges out of the earth. And there you are, you know, you as a person, as a body and everything. That's the function of the earth star. Underneath that, there's layers that have to do with the tribe. That you're from your ancestors your parents grandparents and so on physical direct uh, genetics okay tribal connections 
there's a part that has to do with uh, your personal, your identity, your real self, so to speak, that gets accessed by doing TUMO. TUMO sort of filters out everything that hasn't got anything to do with you. Everything that's tribal becomes clear. It defines itself as this is self and that is tribe very clearly. So there's a process. I've been in this process, I think, all over November, December of last year. And it's not been always completely understandable or easy. And it took a while to get it all figured out. Videos on my channel about this, okay? So in between the tribe layer and the self layer is what I call this third chakra, the third, third down chakra, which I call the incarnation chakra. And as far as I can figure it out, it has everything to do with um, the sort of a choice you made before coming into this life, okay? So at the back of you, there is on that level, the past lives and the information that you have gathered, it's actually all really there. It's a th really sitting there in the earth. I've seen it so many times by now. I can even see it in other people if I, <clears throat> you know, choose to look, which is something I don't really want to do because it's a mess often. And it's not my business, okay, to be looking at people's karma and all that stuff. But it's all really there. I don't really get to see karma so much as in cause and effect and behavior and those kinds of things. Those are That's way too detailed. What I would get looking at the incarnation chakra and the sort of a deep self chakra beneath it. The deep self chakra has the past lives information sort of gathered in it. In, in the top half of it, if you like, or around it, there's all sorts of connections that indicate past experiences. Also small ones of when you were just an infant and you died in that situation, or there's shapes that are twisted and not straight, you know, hence look a bit like a corkscrew. I had one of those on this side of me also that is in the fourth down level but it has uh it has the the underneath all that underneath all the fluffy bits and pieces that have this these connections to past lives underneath that is really a sense of this is who i really am and for me that's always been completely peaceful and completely stabilizing and it gives me a lot of peace of mind to come into contact with that energy again there's more underneath that, but these four are really the most useful and the most easily mapped out. And there's still a lot to learn about the four. Okay, so hence the lengthy explanation, because I think this stuff is super cool. So from the sort of deep self area, you actually made the choice at one point from not in a body not already in a in a in an incarnation not already in a life you know you but not in this <laughs> you decided to go for a life again and that's the that's the impulse that sort of sits in this third down i hope you're still following really this third down level deep self with all the all the sort of remaining information connections that have that you have gathered from past lives and your own your your own personal you know who you really are your own self then the incarnation chakra that has this decision made this life this life today what you've been working on for the number of years that you've been here okay this life actually um came to be and here it is you know <laughs> what can i say and then up from there so two down it's the tribal level in my book in my experience in how i feel these things you know tribal your parents and there's connections also going from incarnation to tribal 
that sort of explain how it is that you have those parents. But all that is gets pretty vague. I'm not even sure that those connections I can that I can really feel those connections. I I am sort of suspicious that it's probably more that I think that it would make sense to have the incarnation uh, chakra pick your parents for you. I don't know. I haven't really seen that. What I've seen is the emotion. The emotion of the incarnation chakra coming, uh, as it were, to me, making contact with me in the energy of the tumult in the super integrating force, force field, if you like, of the Tumo. Everything that isn't, that doesn't really belong with me gets pushed out or chucked out. So having said that, having this emotion suddenly come to me, I apparently wanted this life really bad. Way before I was born, way before I was conceived. I went for this life but it feels and especially okay having seen the emotional content and the having sort of an interaction a bit of a relationship with that incarnation chakra now I get a couple of conclusions that come to me and first of all is that the uh, the effect of the white light okay I've learned something about that which I'd never realized, as you heal away things with white light, say I have this little bottle of graveyard dirt, okay, over here. Say I want to do a white light healing on this because I feel there's a need for some reason. I have never done that and I wouldn't do it because this is very positive kind of vibration for me. Graveyard dirt is just fine. Um doesn't need it it's fine on the level that it is at to be the way it is but say you would have something like this where there's a bad vibe okay and you want to stick a white light vibration in there to clear out negative thoughts fear often you know fear and anger and those kinds of things what you really end up doing what the white light ends up doing I should say it this incarnates stuff from in here or whatever or wherever we are applying this thing to a house for example or to another person white light has no other really role to play but to disincarnate things it's something I had no clue about I did not know this okay I was stupid because it makes perfect sense what else are you doing when there is spirit attachment, entities, um, grey fluff, fatigue, endless tiredness, endless uh, lack of progress, all those kinds of vibes, okay? There's vibes in there, there's vibrations, there's fields, there's old connections, old things that serve no purpose anymore, but they're still there because of habit. What you do with white light is sort of, sometimes gently, sometimes more forcefully, break those connections. Send them into the light, is what we do. Which means you disincarnate them. You help them disincarnate. I don't know of a better word, you know. You um, take them away from the dimension of the flesh and matter and the earth. And you send them home. My incarnation chakra, of course, was having none of it. It doesn't want, it thought it had to die again. With the white light coming this close to it in this particular exactly right there and it still makes some sign some kind of sense if i connect it to my menopause things going on which was the original reason why i had to get rid of some of the energies that were in there it turns out those energies have everything to do with 
female fertility, right? Menopause makes sense. But they also have everything to do literally with the organs in my underbelly, literally with my ovaries and all the rest of that kit. But they also have everything to do with tribe. So my female, mostly ancestors, uh, in the direct lines going way down. It was, it was working on them too, as it were. And taking out the fertility for me meant there's a piece of incarnation energy actually going. Yes, because I incarnated as a female, as a fertile female that never have had any, any children myself. But my ancestresses, my female ancestors, of course, had kids. Otherwise, I would not be here, right? And there was even a very clear, very easy to perceive layer where the energy in question connected to my past lives. So not the tribal business, but down here in the deep self layer. Over there, I had the only realization I'd had so far up to this point was that, um, and this is like last year or yeah, a bit longer ago, at least 12 months ago, I think, that um, my in, in my past lives, okay, the past lives that I'm strongly connected to, that I actually kind of know about, but I've made videos about also, it looks like none of them actually had a menopause because they died before they did, before they could. Which was like a thought, like I went like, oops, that's a big thought to be having. I have, I, the self, the deep self, me, okay, we have no experience with the menopause in the body. Like doing this here. <laughs> So I just have to figure this out because it's going to be, I'm alive now. I am 55 going on 56 this year. It is time for the hormones to stop doing the monthly circus, you know, and all that. And um, I have no experience with this. There isn't a single cell. There isn't a single fiber in my past as a person that I can access, that can tell me what's really happening. I knew this a year ago, so far, okay. And by now, fast forwarding with that information up to my recent experiences, I would say, uh, what would I say? I don't know. It's like, it's confirmed. We have no experience with this whole thing. And taking out forcefully with white light this level of this, uh, this, this kind of this side of the incarnation energy affected me on that level. It sounds like an en enormous lengthy tale to just explain how I am affected by my menopause. And it's that. But it's because of Tumo, really, that it is so much more actually there. It looks like you incarnate as a female for a reason. And at the time, two weeks ago, I also said the energy that left me, that ended up leaving me in the white light experience, which sort of backfired then physically, you know, for me. This won't make any sense if you haven't seen my two weeks ago video. Okay, so I'll just link that in the description to this because otherwise we're all going to be really confused. I just think it's such useful information and who knows in the future there will be other people who can, you know, enjoy this content. Enjoy. Enjoy this content, yes. <laughs> and, you know, it, each time I do Tumo, it makes me feel 10 years younger. I take my Tumo energy into my post-menopausal years and I have all the kinds of energy I need to live. I do not need to necessarily be a reproducing female anymore. But it is 
being a female, so this has everything to do with being a female. I hope you're still with me. Being a female in the reproducing kind, in the reproducing years, means you have a physical capability, a physical sort of willingness even, to have another person, even more than one, in the case of twins and triplets and so on, another person to germinate on all the levels inside you. That's what being a female truly means in terms of energy. The self allows for an empty space inside it. And that is actually where my healing work got done. So it got as close to myself, to my incarnation energy, as it as it could be. I hope I'm making sense to you. It makes sense to me. I still think it's a logical chain of impressions and sensations and thoughts. And it's just sort of the whole thing ties together really, really well. It, it, there's no weird weirdness in terms of, wow, I never saw that coming. At some point, it starts making sense. Luckily, hopefully, yes. So... Um, I am still quite a bit in shock <laughs> as to how powerful my white light work can be, apparently, which I kind of always felt it was, but I never, never this, these kinds of levels. And thank God. Yeah. Okay. So I always felt like I was kind of playing around a bit and it wasn't such a big deal, you know? I'd always go off and make dinner again, or go see a mate, or you just have a life. It's not like you constantly are in these ethereal vibes. Not me. I'm way too solid a citizen for that. You know, I uh, don't really want to be. Uh, I don't want to be up in with the angels the whole time. That just doesn't suit me. I'm trying to make my candle burn a bit brighter. For some reason it just wants me to wobble it. And then I get light, get get a flame again. It sort of sinks down into itself. Um, so I don't know about that. Maybe there's just not enough styrene in there. I made those candles myself. So I like messing with practical stuff as well as jewelry and as well as paints and, you know, all those things. And um, I never realized that it would be this powerful and that it would be this intense and that it would be this scary and I would feel this threatened by the white light. That's just incredible right there. Um, so I think I've got it figured out now. Like I said, it just makes sense that my incarnation chakra actually apparently... Um, felt it it just went along with the whole procedure and if it shuts down then my dantians shut down and i have no energy in my body and have no shakti and uh it's very scary i have no idea where that would go i think this is uh very very scary but it sort of confirms my descriptions for the different levels i think so there's probably loads more to figure out. Um, I, I sort of have sensed my mother's presence this morning a bit more in terms of like what with having less of the fertility energy and the capability of generating new life in a body and so on and so forth, leaving me. I've become more aware of the people in my tribe as people different the women as different individuals i see them as as individuals now instead of as sort of faces on top of a huge wave of um you know female femaleness for some reason um so i saw my mother also i could just sort of feel her i didn't see her near really but i felt her as a person and I felt and that was the last thing I was looking for the next thought because I had one other thought 
and that would be that my parents, both my parents, because I have this really weird situation where my um, both my parents have nearly the same birth chart. So they were born two days apart and it's like my parents were twins. So that's so freaking, so, you know, I just find that really, really strange. And I still, I'm still kind of looking for an, an explanation for that in all these vibration things, you know. I want to find, <laughs> if possible, an explanation <laughs> for the fact that my parents were unofficial twins. They weren't related. They just had the same chart, the same astrology, nearly the same. It was like a day and a half difference between them and uh, I still, it still freaks me out. So they had a lot of the same problems, they had a lot of the same intensity in life, they had a lot of difficulties with their own families and what I felt like was this morning I think was that I, um, I, had, I had a vague idea really that their own incarnation uh, was difficult as well. Same as for me, really. So it just had to be like this for a reason. So I keep telling myself that making these videos will, you know, that'll be the reason why I am out here, you know, <laughs> with my stories and my endless uh, 40 minutes. That's enough, isn't it? I also bought a really pretty bracelet. This is my favy kind of strass uh, glittery stones. Oh, I like those so much. I used to be nuts about those when I was eight years old. This is the kind, I don't know if you can see it really with this lighting and all that, but these uh, sort of crystal stones in here, it's glass really, but they have, um, that's my favorite. They come in all sorts of colors, red and green and what have you. But this type has like a combination of like orange pink, pinkish orange and sky blue. Uh, like rainbowy effects on them and I just love those so that was real cheap with uh, with the necklace I just paid three and a half euros for that excellent and I have a ring back there that has the same kinds of stones and I have I'm all into jewelry all of a sudden little uh, bracelet with uh, preferably with skulls on it you know because witchy stuff so this is um yeah this is what I had to tell you today I kind of feel like it worked so I will see what I go do next I had uh, fun with my tarot book you know some subject for another day I had cards for the whole <laughs> the cards for the whole of the of the session okay the yesterday's session where the the incarnation chakra made itself felt to me and we had this this connection going on and this sense of uh, there's a ton of emotion like the, this is really an important part of your life the incarnation level you chose to be here you need to be friends with that energy but most of it is like deep in the past and it, it's not so it, Tumo helps to get this kind of access the cards the devil okay followed by the emperor followed by the ten of swords and the five of swords so i thought that was kind of i just left these out here with my uh guadalupe mary statue in the hope of uh, making some more sense of that it's kind of it, yeah, it, I suppose it makes sense. The devil card, as well as the strength card, often come out with for me in terms of um, things having to do with Tumo. And of course, the emperor is a cool card to get in terms of incarnation energies. The choice that you made to be here. You're here, right? Um, sort of completely unconnected to your circumstances you are here apart from the circumstances and separate from your self the being being a self is something that happens anyway 
So maybe that's an encouraging thought. But there are still lots of swords. Too many swords, I think. So, yeah. On that note, I'm going to leave it at this three quarters of an hour. <sighs> Goodbye. <laughs> I think I'm going to watch somebody else's video now. Thank you for watching, you people. Blessed be. See you next time. Probably next week. Okay? See you then. Bye-bye.